So today we are going to talk about Song of Solomon. This book is also referred to uh, more recently as the Song of Songs, and it is a tale that speaks of a man and a woman who are so enthralled in in love for each other that it is literally uh, dripping from who they are. So in the Jewish canon, this book appears in the writings. However, because of its imagery um, and poetry, the Christian community places it in the section of literature known as wisdom literature or poetical books. Now, the author of the book historically has been attributed to Solomon, but most modern scholars believe that the text is anonymous. There's nothing in the text as far as events that are happening in real world time that give us any sort of indication as to when it was written. Most scholars believe that it was written at some point between the 10th century BCE and the 2nd century BCE. Language and morphology and some certain idioms and syntax that occur in the text have led more modern scholars to believe that it was probably penned sometime between the 3rd century BCE. So the structure of the book is that of a love poem. Uh, You have the man describing his love for this woman. You have the woman who reciprocates her, uh, this, her love for the man, and then occasionally they bring in this chorus known as the Daughters of Jerusalem, who in effect are witnessing their love and are supporting their love. And so, so um, think about it in terms of a really dense, erotic, um, sort of taboo love letter that two people are writing to each other Uh, and yet a third group of people is watching this unfold. Uh, So the theme of the book is this love, how great it is to be in love and to be in the presence of one's lover. Uh, But this book has provided some challenges for interpretation in the life of the church and for the community of faith. Historically, people have resorted to interpreting the Song of Solomon as an allegory. If you were Jewish, the traditional interpretation would be that the man represents God and the female companion represents Israel. And so this is really an erotic tale of how the creator God and the God of the people of Israel feels about Israel and in in turn how Israel feels about her God. If you were a Christian and you were interpreting this um, early on, you would have thought of this as Jesus Christ representing the man and the church or the bride of Christ representing the woman. And so for the Christian community, traditionally this has been used as interpretation for the way that Jesus Christ feels about his people, the church, and how the church feels about Jesus, its Lord and Savior. Modern scholars think that that's baloney or hogwash, and that the tale is really meant to highlight the beauty and depth of two people who are in love um, and are unashamed in that love for one another. It's beautiful poetry, its imagery is intense and rich and vivid, and I hope that through reading this book in our scriptures, you will be enriched and enlivened.